Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde J.K.L. I'm the host of this podcast, I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, volcanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand in watercolor, tin and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. And welcome to the Artist Friends Podcast. This is Clyde J. Kale, and it is April the 20th, 2020. This is episode 43. And once again, I am here with my two best artist friends, Diane and Constance. And hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everyone. And hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. (laughs) Well, I hope everybody has been doing well with uh, this uh, lockdown and self-quarantine and everybody is keeping safe and your uh, family members are safe. It's going to be over with pretty soon, folks. They're working on a solution here. So we just got to hang in there. And if you're an artist, create more art. If you love art, then there are plenty of artists creating art and it's online and occupy yourself looking at some beautiful works of art. Speaking of artists, uh, the recommended video was from a uh, Paul Klein interview that was done in 2013. I'm probably going to mess this guy's name up. Uh, Tom Nectel, is that how you say his name? Diane, I think. Uh, I think that's what it was. <laughs> but he did an interview with uh, artist Tom Nectel, Nectel who was a been an artist for 30 some years at that time, and uh, he's uh, established across several museums and in several galleries. But what struck my uh, interest in the interview is he gave a good historical perspective of the art market. And so that's how I thought we would talk about a little bit of how the art market has changed, but how it's going to change when things finally get back to a semi-normal. And it got me thinking about all a lot of these small galleries, you know, that are are barely the you know uh, on low margins and just barely getting by and the internet comes along and these are like nails in their coffin and now this has come along i think they're pretty much going to disappear and uh diane you want to add your thoughts to that or well i think it's going to be really hard i mean it's going to be hard for all especially small businesses right now um that have that aren't essential that have had to close just kind of overnight and you know they didn't really have any time to prepare for something i mean who would who would have thought it'd be like this now you know it's it's not yeah. something you would think that uh, in advance to prepare for so it's been really difficult i think um yeah i don't think a lot of them are going to be able to survive i mean a lot of businesses not just galleries but 
yeah. any all the small businesses. Yeah, it's, be it's really hard because small businesses generally run on a very kind of <clears throat> tight budget unless they do, you know, especially if they've just started, you know, to because businesses run a tight budget to begin with. The margins are kind of low to start with, you know, and then they take off after a year or two. Um, but yeah, that's a whole new ball game, I think, out there for. It's just going to be different. Yeah, and what gave me interest me in that interview with uh, Tom Nickel was, uh, you know, he he kind of laid out the 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 cl- the classic or traditional uh, career of an artist, and yeah, you know, you, uh, you enter shows, you enter exhibitions, and then you gain gallery representation, and then your galleries. Uh, put on shows and solo shows or group shows and, and whatnot. And this is how, you know, your, your career advances. And it's based on primarily uh, very strong networking. You go to the openings, you go to the shows, you meet the dealers, you meet the collectors, handshakes and, you know, face to face meetings, they get to know you and everything. Uh, that's all gone. It's going to be gone. <laughs> and we've been here at the Artist Friends Podcast. Our main focus is, is getting the artists on the internet, utilizing modern technology to get their art out there. And that's been our, our primary focus. And, and uh, for a lot of those galleries that, uh, you know, especially small ones that didn't even have an internet presence at all that were resisting it. Scramble. I, I, I kind of feel sorry for him in a way, <laughs> but then on the other hand, I don't because they've been told, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's going to be hard because it's so much to learn, like just trying to navigate all the technology and um, you know, what, what to do and what not to do and technology wise. Yeah. And then which, so which the, place to go to sell through is better than another place. And Yeah. But, I mean, basically, you're doing the same thing. You're just doing it online, but you have to have all the technology set up, and, you know, trying to navigate all that is going to be really hard. And I, we know that takes time. I mean, you sit yeah, at the yeah. computer, and you've got to sit there and work all that out for yourself, get things set up, set up stores and set up. Yeah, you got to develop your workflow, you know, and dedicate, and dedicate the time. And, I mean, that's something that's been the main focus of our Artist Friends podcast is uh, – yeah, I mean, I was looking so forward to, to May because in May last year I had shows back to back every weekend and this year nothing. So it made me glad that I had the Etsy store and I have, you know, doing FASO, although I need to do a lot more work on FASO, but, um, you know, and then daily paint works and stuff. So I feel like I had a, a jump on it. That's, you know, a, good jump on it. I don't have gallery representation. So, you know, when you don't, then you, you work at doing the other stuff a lot harder. Well, that's a good segue to my, to my next point that, uh, there's a big push. Artists, artists are waking up, galleries are waking up and I'm seeing all kinds of, uh, videos where they're talking about and, and they're, uh, giving studio tours and gallery tours and, and whatnot. And, you know, I said, wow, there's, you know, potential thousands of viewers, you know, and, but if you are not already have not already been doing this, been on the internet, been participating, uh, and, and social media and whatnot, and have been doing that for at least a year or two years or more, you're not, it's going to take you that long. Right, Diane? We were just talking before we started. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the learning curve, if you haven't been keeping up with all this stuff, the learning curve is really high. And um, trying to figure out what platforms to be on and which not, you know, what ones not to be on, (laughs) which ones are a waste of time. And, you know, if you have have an inventory, then you've got to figure out how to get your inventory up online, too. So, yeah, you have to learn all the um, technical part of it, just you know, doing manipulating your images and 
making them look good online is you know you cannot you can't just hang a painting on the wall and be done with it you gotta yeah take it to the local to the local uh gallery the gallery that you sell from and just put it up on, and have them put it up on the wall and sell it for you that's just different i remember about a year ago maybe a little bit longer than that i had an artist contact me and uh she wanted to actually talk to me on the phone which i rarely don't do but i went ahead and gave her my number and we talked on the phone and she was interested in uh, fine art america and you know was asking the ins and outs about it got to you know that's a platform one of the platforms I'm, I'm on and then she asked the question so how much money have you made and like i said it's about a year ago i said oh, i think about 30 dollars <sighs> well that's not very much I said, well, you got to understand what the purpose is. What do you mean? The purpose is getting my out, art, my main focus is getting my art out onto the internet and out in front of people and developing a presence. The sales will come later on, but you have to take your baby steps. You have to start out first and get the press and build up, you know, and, uh, you know, she, she just, it was, I could just hear in her voice. She did not understand that. She did not think it was worth her time and investment, you know, and. Well, that's the thing though. It does take a lot of time. And I mean, you, you have to, you know, get your picture, the, the photos of your work have to be really good. You have to write descriptions. You have to figure out your pricing and your shipping and all that stuff. You know, you have to get all that into whatever site you go on and, it all takes a lot of time, an enormous amount of time. I mean, you end up spending, you know, at least half your time doing all the, all that part of it. Yeah. And half painting or, you know, doing your, creating your art. You have to spend a lot of time doing all the, the, um, yes. internet stuff. <laughs> In 2017, yeah. It's when time I, consuming. When I decided to launch my art career. I immediately started researching, you know, different platforms and and i watched some you know youtube videos and how to utilize the platforms and so i ended up getting i've got my art on about seven different platforms since then there's been literally millions of people that have seen i've got stats that have seen my artwork now i put all that in place and then this last year i started investigating entering art international art shows and entering international exhibits and how i got into got accepted into those exhibits was my internet presence because they they wanted to see my website they wanted to uh, see my social media links so they went back and they looked to see you know uh what what i had been doing if i was serious if i just you know when a guy draws something once in a while paint something yeah you know, if i and but it it took that first step to get to the second step you know and from that, I had hopes, but I don't know now, you know, with how the art market's going to change, I had hoped to get into some gallery representation. You know, that was my next goal for 2020. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, and that whole environment's changed now. I mean, people don't, we don't know how long this is going to go on, for one thing. So you don't know, you know, so many shows and, and um, things have been canceled. And some they've tried to reschedule, but, you know, they, they don't know if they're going to have to change it again and trying to fit all the, you know, stuff in. So they might just have to cancel things altogether, with, you know, with all this going on. But um, it really makes it hard as far as trying to uh, figure out what to do next. Like there's yeah. no, I mean, there's, there's still the online competitions and things are going on, shows that are online, do, you know, going on. But, you know, what we don't. Everything's up in the air right now. We don't know what's going to yeah. happen after this all clears up. It thinks exactly. I just a few before we started the show. I uh, watched a sh one of uh, Sergio Gomez's short videos, and he was interviewing an art dealer. And I wished that I had seen it before. I would have re recommended it so you guys could uh, watch it. But the fellow brought up some some ideas. Sergio asked him, "said well, What about like you know Art Basel and the large art fairs? You know, are are they going to?" continue and this individual uh he recommended he said they probably will but not have the large crowds that they've had in the past and it will be sort of uh, segmented you know 
and his attitude now, he said, this is a f- excellent opportunity for uh, the uh, smaller galleries who couldn't go, who couldn't participate in art basils or in art fairs because of the high, co- the high cost of entry fees. And this is an excellent opportunity for them to step up and, and uh, get their art and get their shows and their artists that they represent out onto the Internet and before, before collectors. He, said, he, see, he predicts that the art market is going to uh, really uh, narrow, narrow down it's not going to be the the high end players anymore. It's it's going to level the 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 the, uh, the playing field, as they say. It's going to be it's going to be more level, and it's going to give people, artists, and galleries uh, at the low end, emerging artists, artists, more of an opportunity to to get out there. And I just you know we've we've talked about this before you know in our previous you know episodes it's just. An artist, you just, you've got, you, yes, it's hard work. Yes, it takes time, but you have to do it. If you are pursuing a serious art career, you must do it. You must, you know, figure out ways to, to get yourself out on the, on the internet. You know, and it's, there's, there's no two ways about it now. It's now critical. It's no longer an option. It is an, it's an absolute necessity now. Yeah, I mean, we've seen over the last month or so that how, how buying um, has changed, you know, more people are buying stuff online, less people are going to the stores. A lot of times they can't right now. Everything's not so limited, mm-hmm. but um, I, I think a lot of the stores, even re- just regular stores are going to disappear and things are all going to you know move more and more onto l- online. So it's going to be a different way of shopping for people. They're going to be more willing to buy stuff, um, higher price things maybe online, so, as opposed to how they used to do it before. I'm sorry, Diane. I didn't mean. <laughs> I was watching her with the swatter. My <laughs> swatters <laughs> for our listeners. Casa, Casa keeps his hair today. She's got this fly swatter, and I guess it's this fly trying to plug her. She's trying to get, or we're trying to hold a serious conversation here, and she is cracking us up. <laughs> I was trying not to. Well, I didn't come to the studio for a couple of days, so I came over today to get set up for the meeting, and the heater was on. And now it's hot in the studio, so I opened the door. Well, I don't have a screen door, and um, so the flies are coming in. <laughs> And so I'm trying to keep them away from my coffee. <laughs> uh, I didn't mean to start start up any trouble. And, uh, what do you mean? You always mean to start up trouble, Gonsa. So I, <laughs> Somehow I do. That was your middle name. But, you know, it's such a serious time. We need a little bit of levity, folks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes yeah. you never know what's going to happen on our, you know, on this podcast. Like one episode, and all of a sudden, Diane's dog bursted in <laughs> into her room, and jumped up on her lap, and looked right into the camera. Hello. <laughs> uh, that was precious, yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, the we we just can't hammer the point <laughs> more anymore that you know you the artists have, have have got to utilize the internet now there are some some artists that uh are doing pretty good they you can tell they've been doing it for a while and that's what's going to happen when this all levels out in the end in about a couple years from now uh we're going to see you know the winners are going to be the the artists and the galleries that were in the game 10 years earlier, you know, that were on the internet from the very beginning and, and, and jumped on because that's the way anything is, you know, and it doesn't make any difference how much money you have. You can spend all kinds of money on the very end. It is a personal connection and your personal networking through the internet. Like Gary Vanacek talks about, you know, he preaches that constantly. It's the inner well, the, the, the yeah the networking and that works online just just like offline. I mean that's you know so you need that's to be able to do that way. online just as, just as much as you did it offline. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 
There she goes. <laughs> She's still after that fly. <laughs> He's making a ripe, a ripe big pest out of himself, and it's going to cost him if he doesn't want it. <laughs> and folks, she's got a this is a big fly swatter she's got in her hand, a gray, big orange, <laughs> a red, red orange. Yeah. Red, but yeah, like <laughs> he will not live through it if he doesn't watch it. It'll cost him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one of the other videos I thought was rather interesting. I recommend it was uh, those uh, five uh, female artists. And that, uh, you know, we're, we're talking about uh, uh, how this uh, virus is affected. In fact, I think that one, she almost came to tears as she watched her, uh, you know, business, you know, disappear. What did you, what did you two think about that? You know, they were all rather young, you know, young women. And as a typical, you know, the younger girls get on, on the internet, you know, they, they spend more time trying to look pretty than they actually trying to say anything smart, but okay. I'm sorry. I said that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just what I see. <laughs> yeah. They sounded, well, one of them especially sounded very frustrated at, at what's going on right now. And that is a very valid frustration. I mean, it's kind of hard to, when you're used to having your money, it takes you so long to get your money coming in from all different directions and get yourself worked out where you're doing okay. And then something like this comes along and just blows you right out of the water and you've got to figure out how to do it all over again, which is what I've been doing since I moved here because I got blown out. I blew myself out of the water when I moved to Oklahoma away from the tourist area where I was selling everything. So I've been for four or five years now trying to figure out how to make it work on the internet. So those people that already have a good following of people will probably transition to the internet really well. But when you're first starting out and you start doing the internet thing, you've got all the different things that you need to establish and, and you've got to learn all those apps you know, apps and, and uh, things that you, tools that you use to make things work for you. And um, so it's, um, yep. it's, a, there's a learning curve, there's a time curve. It's just all of it, you know, there's which a, takes away from what you'd like to do, which is painting. Yeah. And there's a tremendous amount of resources out there available. Yeah. But let me warn for, there is not one. I don't care who he is. I don't care how experienced. I don't care how much of an expert. There is not one person who has the one size fits all solution. Don't no. get uh, swallowed or don't don't put all your money in the, the you know, hit you hit your uh, you know your your train or your car to that train as they say. You know uh, there are several several solutions and you as an individual artist you have to decide what works best for you yeah maybe multiple multiple and that takes time you know a little bit of time time yes patience you must have patience you will get through this we will all get through this believe me i uh i have uh, it's not fun in the meantime though <laughs> faith in the human spirit and especially in artists, artists, we, we tend to, uh, rise to the call. And, uh, I, I do believe that, uh, we will make it, you know, you want to add well, the best, the best thing about being artists is that we are problem solvers. And right now there's all these problems that <laughs> need to be solved and we're pretty adaptable as far as being able to, um, change, you know, our direction and change, um, what we're used to doing. I think we're, uh, we have more adaption qualities than a lot of people do. And I think it's, um, that's one of the reasons that people are looking up to artists right now. I mean, they're spending an awful, awful lot of time online, you know, looking at other, looking at artists and musicians and all the people in the arts because we are um, very adaptable and we can make things out of nothing so <laughs> it's, yeah you know we, we're like the hope for other people so that's kind of a cool thing we're, we're like magicians you know we're wizards we can, <laughs> wizards. <laughs> we, we can just with our hands make magic well i've got gandalf's hat hair anyway don't i <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> i have wizard hair 
<laughs> it's white. I think that would be the final the final comment here. All right. And uh, I just want to want to encourage uh, our artist listeners and our art lover listeners to uh, keep at it. You know, keep up, keep up the faith and uh, continue working. I mean, I have to, I have to tell my, tell myself this last week. I just could not get motivated to create any art. And that's abnormal. I usually create at least one piece a week, but I just could not do anything last week. But this week I'm uh, making a promise to myself. I'm going to create some art and I hope. Well, we, we all have to give ourselves some grace and, and cause we're all, it's, it's something new that we're all going through and, and I can't, I, I can't remember ever being in a situation like this before. I mean, you know, where the whole world is on lockdown. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, but, it is. Um, so it's something that we all, it's a, it's a different day, you know. Yep. So it, it's, we have to all adapt and figure out what's best for us and stay safe. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's safe. the main thing. Safe and- Staying safe, not getting sick. Keep our, and keep our family safe. So I think that will be it for this episode, episode 43 for April the 20th, 2020. And this is the Artist Friends Podcast. And you've been listening to Clyde J. Kale and Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. And I'm going to say goodnight to Diane and Constance. Good night, Clyde. Good night, everyone. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Diane. See you Good next fun. week. Yes, we'll see you next week. And if you're an artist, make some art. If you're an art lover, just keep looking. Buy some art. (laughs) Yeah, buy some art too, most certainly. Bye-bye, folks. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt, and Constant Brosnan and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constant Brosnan at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C B R O S N A N S. Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com. If you'd like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. That's cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license. Thank you for listening.